I'm Harry and welcome back to Drum Electric. So in this video, we are gonna be creating a click and cues track. What does that mean? This is the result of it. We've got our stems, we've got our click and we've got our cues. So that means when we hit play. One, two, three, four. Verse two, three, four. We have that, but that's not it. They are also completely customizable. So for the click, for example, let's solo that, let's hit play. You don't want eighth notes? Turn that off. You want more eighth notes? There we go. You want a different sound completely? No problem. Completely customizable. But the best bit, the, my favorite bit, that count in. Don't want it in English? You want it in Spanish, French, Portuguese? We've got you covered, buddy. Un, deux, trois, quatre. Didn't have to do anything, just changed the number. Let's build this, it's really, really easy. So the actual backing tracks themselves will probably be something that you've recorded or that you've created or that you're taking from like karaoke version that's an official song and that you're using those random synths in the background for. In this case, for this video, so it can be viewed everywhere, I'm just using some tracks from Epidemic Sound. So all of the steps are exactly the same, it's just the audio you're hearing is from Epidemic Sound. That's kind of about it. So that's the backing track audio. Now the click and the click cues audio. Our wonderful person going one, two, three, four. There you go, sample that. You're welcome. All you have to do is go to multitracks.com. This is the one that I found. There are a bunch out there. I have no association with any of these people. This is just the one that I actually use and that I really enjoy. And it's free, so there we go. I'll put the link in the description, but multitracks.com, scroll down a bit, click and guide, you click that and it automatically downloads. Now, once you've done that, you get this hunky folder. It's a technical term. So in there, you've got an Ableton project, which we'll actually look at, and then you've got all of the individual audio. So let's open this Ableton project and actually start building this click. And what this is gonna do means that we can actually have a custom click that we can adjust live if we need to. So this is the project. It's, the premise is really simple. So you've got two things. You've got the guide cues, and that's our, our vocal person going one, two, three, four, that sort of thing. And then you've got click foundation, which is actually the click track itself. The guide cue, looking down here, there's an instrument rack. If you've never used any of this before, don't worry, I'm gonna explain how to use it. It's very, very simple. It can be a little bit daunting though. So within this, They've set out all of the samples. So if I just two, one, two, three, four, five, and so on, and bridge four, vamp, bridge one, bridge two. There's loads. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch to arrangement view. They've got all of the, the tabs and everything set out. So you can save this Ableton project as your template if you build track backing tracks a lot. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna save it and then import it to loads of different projects. That's just my workflow, but absolutely do this to whatever works for you. So the first one we're gonna do is the guide cues. I'm just gonna highlight a bar here, right click, insert empty MIDI clip, and now we can see all of these wonderful things here. So I'm just going to create a one, two, three, four, okay? So I'm gonna go Command B to right, one, two, where is it, three, four, all in time. And then if I hit the uh, the noise thing, the headphones is also what that's called. One, two, three, four. Great, that works. If I change the tempo to 120. One, two, three, four. That'll stay in time. And you can see how this is gonna work as we use this with backing tracks. What I'm gonna do from there, I'm gonna double click on the track, go onto the instrument rack again, and now we can actually preset this. So if we wanted to change the language or specific things, we can. All you're gonna do is hit the chain button here. As you can see, there's four things. So zero, one, and I'm gonna move that to two and three. And up here, you've got this movable ruler. If you right click that, we're gonna map this to preset one, and that is this orange guy over here. So what that does is when we move it, as you can see, the ruler moves. So I'm gonna loop that one bar. There's definitely an easier way to do this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I move three, this to one. Four, one, two, three, cuatro, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, un, dos, tres, cuatro. A, two, trois, quatre, a, so that's a really fun thing to do to mess with your bandmates. But there you go, you can see how this works. And now all we can do is if I put that back at zero, because that's the English one and that's the one that I, I would quite like to use, 
just in general. What we can actually do now is save this as a preset so we can just drag and drop that into any project, which is really nice. So I'm just gonna click on this button over here just to hide the chain list. And then I'm gonna hit the save button and I'm just gonna send it as the Q's device. There we go, it's gonna save it on the right hand side under user library. I'm just gonna drag that into the bottom and then I don't have to go through loads of folders. But what I can also do is export this MIDI clip so then I can drag and drop the device and then drag and drop the MIDI and then I'm done. That's, that's my cues track done. So export the MIDI clip. What I'm gonna do back on Ableton is right click the user library, show in finder. There it is, user library. Open up that, that MIDI we've just created. I'm just gonna drag it into there. There's the cues MIDI. So what happens basically is if I delete that, then I bring in the cues MIDI onto verse one, for example, hit play. One, two, three, four. Job done. Now, that's the simple one. The next bit is we want the click sound itself. And to do that, we're gonna use click foundation. Now this one's a little bit more, bit more weighty. It's got a bit more to it, but it's actually a really cool thing. So exactly the same as the Q track, I'm gonna create some empty space, insert MIDI clip, and you're gonna to want to copy this exactly because this is just like a preset thing. So I'm gonna put notes here. I'm gonna put quarter notes here as you can hear it. And then I'm gonna put eighth notes up here, as you can hear, and I'm gonna put 16th notes here. Okay, now you're probably wondering, well, that's just gonna be a mess of sound. Well, it kind of is and it isn't. And this is, this is the clever thing. So if we click back onto what we've actually got here, what's being created is a bunch of presets within this instrument rack. So if you can't see this, you just hit the macro controls and they've already been mapped for us by the lovely people at multitracks.com. And what you can do is then bring in the other notes should you need them. So for example, I'll get this playing. Now we've only got quarter notes. I can turn them up if I want an accent. There isn't really one there. Have I put that in the right place? I didn't. But there you go, there's the accent, eighth note or 16th notes. And there we go, so it's completely customizable. So if you're on a gig and they're like, actually, can we have eighth notes? Or if you're playing and you're like, I kind of need a bit more musicality to this click, this is how you do it. Now, the great thing is you can change the sound of this click. There's about, I think it's 12 total including a custom one that you can import your own sounds to. Now exactly the same thing. I'm gonna hide all of this because we don't need it. I'm gonna hit save and I'm just gonna save it as the click device. Exactly the same, move it down here. And then with this MIDI track, I'm just going to export MIDI clip. Rather than opening the finder, what I can do is actually just drag it into Ableton, click MIDI, there it is. So I'm now gonna exit this and now we're gonna start building our backing tracks. So this is a blank project of Ableton. As you can see on the left here, we've got our four things that we created. Now I'm gonna import my samples into the arrangement view. Uh, I'll use the audio tracks here. I'll delete one of them. I'm just going to find a, there's my stems. And now I'm going to import my stems onto that audio track. When I'm holding there, I'm gonna hold command and as you can see, they now go above each other. It's just one of those little tricks that's just really nice to know. One of the good things about Ableton is it, it keeps it a little bit spicy. So if I hit play. Here we go with the same old thing, like I said something, just to... It's like you put a band in a recording studio and was like, right, just play, don't count it, just, just play, see what happens. All of that is out of time. And the reason is, is because Ableton has automatically synced it all to the tempo and structure of the project. It's a really handy tool, but, but not in this case. So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna command A, I'm gonna drag them all to bar two. That was a bit of a weird way of doing that, but I'm then gonna double click on each track and this warp button here, just tap off for that bad boy. The last thing you wanna do is just expand out the tracks. And then because these tracks specifically were exported in the same place, I can bring them all in line to that second bar just because I like to leave a bars gap at the beginning. And if I hit play. Is the click in time, because it has changed. Let's find out. 
Not quite. So to find the tempo of a track, you can do two things. So because I'm using a pre-recorded track, I know the tempo is 115 BPM because it said so when I downloaded it. And that might be the case for you if you're using your own original audio. If you're using official audio from an official track, like you're doing a cover, then you can go to songbpm.com and just find any track you like and it shows the BPM. I use this all the time. It's a really handy thing to have. So you can take from those three things and find the tempo. Once you've found it, we're just gonna tap on the, twin the tempo thing up here, 115, make sure that's still lined up. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing, this technology. Okay, that's all in time. That's really good. So now we wanna put the click track to it. So we're gonna use these two MIDI devices at the top here, and this is super easy because of what we've already done in this video. So the click device, I'm gonna put up here at the top. There we go, it's renamed it, it's all there. I'm gonna put the click MIDI in, bar one, and then just loop it for the whole track. There we go. Where does it slow down? <laughs> There. I'm gonna turn off the click of Ableton. I'm also just gonna turn down all of these so we can see, well, so we can hear the click over all of the tracks. Okay, so now, if I go back to the beginning, there's our click. We can turn all of that down. There we go, that now sounds way better. I'm gonna take the record arm off of the MIDI just in case in future we record MIDI. So we've got the click track, super easy. Now we want to do the cues, drag that onto that MIDI track. Same thing, cues MIDI, go right to the beginning. And then... One, two, three, four. Crazy, I know, crazy. Now what you can also do with this cues track, if you double click it, we do have a lot more. So I can just drag that first one up to verse one. Well, I'll just, yeah, and I'll keep it verse one. That's nice. And then we've got. Verse one, two, three, four. It kind of overlays it a little bit. So I'm just gonna go back down to verse. Drag that down so I can see everything. Verse two, three, four. Stunning. And because of how we created it, double click that. You know what? I'm in the mood for French today. Couplet deux, trois, quatre. Even that isn't the best thing you've ever heard all day. I, 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 I don't know what it is. That's how you create a click and cues. That is how you create a click and cues track within Ableton that gives you loads of control over it. You can do that for a whole gig and it's really easy because then you can just map the tempo of Ableton per the song or track you're doing and all the MIDI just moves so it's all just in time all of the time and it's, it's just so good it's just so easy and that's what we like so if you have any questions or things you just want to chat about feel free to love them in the comment section down below and if your questions are a bit more specific to your setup feel free to shoot me a message on instagram or facebook and i'll i'll hope i can help you there that's it i hope you have a fantastic day